Well, new questions today about whether the Obama administration went to bat for a wireless company called Light Squared. Light Squared is trying to roll out a powerful new wireless system, one that might cause problems, some say, with GPS systems. Now, this story started back in February of 2005, at least. President Obama puts up to $90,000 of his own money into a little-known firm at that time called Skyterra. September of 2009, an investor named Philip Falcone meets his future business partner at the White House. Six months later, Falcone buys Skyterra, and the company becomes Light Squared. January of this year, the FCC gives Light Squared a green light to expand wireless Internet bandwidth. That was an important ruling for Light Squared. Then early of this month, Air Force General William Shelton says the White House pressured him to change testimony he was giving to Congress after revealing concerns about Light Squared interfering with military systems. He says the White House wanted him to make his testimony a little bit more favorable, in essence, to Light Squared. The White House says that's not exactly right. Flash forward now to September 8th. A congressional subcommittee holds a hearing. Light Squared executives testify. Five days later, the FCC calls for additional testing of the Light Squared project. And then last Thursday, General Shelton testifies before the House Armed Services Subcommittee. Some law lawmakers say the White House put national security in jeopardy that day. Uh, that type of attempt to bias testimony on something that goes straight to the issue of the heart of our national security is certainly of grave concern. Well, Philip Falcone is a majority shareholder in Light Squared and founder of Harbinger Capital, which is the big, the money behind the company. All right, Philip, thank you so much for being here. I don't even know if I, if I understood what I read there myself. Let me try to boil it down for our viewers, okay? So you're, you are a gazillionaire. Uh, who put a bunch of money into this company, Light Squared, and you are trying to create a highway in the sky for uh, satellite communication, right? For, for, correct, yeah. correct. And uh, you've been at this for years and years and years, and it's a huge project. Uh, well, now there are allegations by some critics of the White House, and I guess of yours, that, 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 that the FCC gave you a waiver for this project just in January that may have been politically motivated. They think maybe the FCC looked the other way when the Department of Defense was saying, hold on, hold on, hold on, we don't like this project that Philip Falcone has. It could interfere with military GPS and other things. And why did the FCC do that for you? And then there are questions about why the White House stepped in to tell this general, who was testifying about his concerns, to soften it a little bit. That, that is a generalized statement of how this story became a national news story instead of just Philip Falcone arguing with bureaucrats over whether he's going to get his network in the sky. Right. Correct. OK. So you say this is this is not there are no concerns that there's nothing to worry about with the GPS, that the, the your wireless competitors, the Pentagon, that this has just become a political story. Why? It, it has really become a political battle, which is really unfortunate. But a couple of things that I want to correct okay. um, in your um, opening statement, you mentioned that I went down to see um, the president. I never met. I've never met the president. OK. Um, and. He he apparently acquired some stock back in 2000 to 2005, 2006, and subsequently sold it. So that's irrelevant to what we're talking about today. I think the important thing to get across is that we were granted authorization of this spectrum and to use this spectrum to build out a nationwide wireless network in 2005. Under the Bush administration. Under the Bush administration. And subsequent to that is when I, when I became involved. I became an investor, and the more I um, got to uh, understand, or the more I understood about this company, the more I realized that, that, realized that it was a great asset. So flash fast forward that now we're in 2009, I made a bid to acquire the company. Um, and this waiver that people are talking about as the it FCC to waiver in fast January. Track, it's, it's irrelevant. Quite frankly, when we first approached the FCC, it was more of an interpretation of their uh, waiver to acquire the company in 2010. So we didn't apply for a waiver. The, 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 what, what everybody's talking about does not affect the network. It's all about um, the devices that we were trying to deploy. Okay, but let me just stop you there because I think maybe we've lost our viewers. Here, here's what the critics say. There's this Republican, for example, from Georgia, Austin Scott who says, he's talking about that waiver you got in January, and he says the White House's technology policy arm, that's called the National Telecommunications and Information Administration, urged 
that approval by the FCC in January. And he added, quote, I have never seen a federal agency advocate that strongly on behalf of any private sector company unless somebody's wheel was getting greased. And the suggestion is that you or someone affiliated with you was greasing somebody's wheel in the administration behind the scenes to get that waiver in January from the FCC. Absolutely not. Um, that is uh, a complete um, misinformation of facts. All right, but let me ask you two things. Because, first of all, would you be willing to produce all of your communications with the FCC, the company's communications with the FCC, to remove um, all doubt? Well, I'm, I'm sure that, that my communications with the FCC and the, the company's company. communications with the FCC would show that, there's, that, 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 that any discussions that took place were in the normal course of business. It's, so would you release them? Would you make them public? Because there's been a call for that. Um, you know, I'd have to check with my counsel, but I have no reason to believe that we shouldn't be able to re release them. So you're willing to do it unless your legal counsel says that there's some legal impediment to doing well, it? Well, I mean, I wouldn't go down that path. I don't know if it's necessary because You know, people, people are... say, if you say there's nothing untoward going on and there was no undue influence, then make the documents public. No, but see, see, everybody's missing the point here. I'm not so sure. People are talking about this waiver. We were granted the waiver in 2005, not in 2010. But what's at issue now is what happened in January. That's what your critics are pointing to. So why well, just clear it up. Just, yeah, just but, release the documentation and say, look, this is a nothing burger. Look what we talked about. We could very easily do that. I, I don't, I'm not on the board of the company. I don't speak for the company. But, but you're the money. You're the billionaire. I know, I, I you tell them to do I it. Am, they're going to do I it. I know. Before I, before I say something, I need to check with the appropriate people. But the, again, the reality of it is it's not the 2010 waiver was irrelevant to what to, to the network. It's if, all if about it, the if devices. It, if and it people was irrelevant, don't understand that. Here's what, I don't understand it either. I'll be quite frank. But what I do understand is there are these emails that were released um, by iWatchNews.org that suggest an urgency in having meetings about this, about this waiver prior to the waiver. And they have, for example, um, this, this is light squared officials who are sending emails to the White House trying to talk uh, about this FCC uh, issue in advance of it. And, they, and they, this I Watch News put out the emails, including one uh, that says, I think we've got the full screen, it says, Hi Anish, which is a reference to Anish Chopra, the President's Chief Technology Advisor, back in September, uh, who writes, I touched base with my client, Sanjeev Vahuja, which is the CEO, and he expressed an interest in meeting with you. He's going to be in D.C. next week for a fundraising dinner with the President. And what your critics say is, all these attempts to meet uh, with the White House officials mention that there's also going to be some fundraising going on by the CEO on behalf of Democrats or the president. They think it looks bad. Well, people are construing one thing, and quite frankly, it means something completely different. And the reality of it is that communication was a function of getting in front of the Office, and Sci Office of Science and Technology to talk about Which our... the White House exec executive branch. The, to talk about, as, as a business entity that's that's about to deploy eight to ten billion dollars to build a network to talk about what's happening with the national broadband plan and, and if this makes sense with the national broadband plan. Why well, mention that nothing, the CEO is going to be there to fundraise for President Obama? Because it's a function of them telling the individual when he will be showing up and in um, DC. This is not, you know, this is not about people think that we've made contributions to grease the wheels. That is so wrong it's 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 you've disgusting. contributed to both democrats and republicans that is correct and so is the ceo uh, i don't know about what he's done or what he our information done. is that he's made thirty thousand dollars of donations to both okay. sides of the aisle and you yourself have made donations to both to sides both sides are you more one side than the other well i don't know if i should say this but i am a registered republican so you don't feel any political alignment with this White House? Uh, no, quite frankly, I'm, I'm, uh, I've kind of taken a step back over the last few years. But, you know, again, it, it's a function of me trying to deploy a network to build out a plan. The FCC has been um, um, so challenging as it relates to what we're trying to do here. Let me pause you. We're going to come right back with you after this break, and I'm going to ask you about this general who says he felt pressured on his testimony. That's right after this break.